to read for register. So, first to introduce myself, I'm Dragan, the founder. This is my website, Environmental Modeling Solutions. I'm the founder of uh, Environmental Modeling Solutions. And I'm the organizer of Groundwater Connecting Science and Practice Conference. That conference is going to be held tomorrow for North America. And two days after that, 14 June for Europe. And uh, this time zone, including Africa. So this is a first annual first annual online conference with aim to spread the word about latest achievements in groundwater and science. You are probably aware with the, about speakers. They are really uh, exceptional in their fields. First by uh, order, Chris Rich from Geometrics. He will talk about geophysics. John Dorothy, the author of PEST, Industry Standard for Groundwater Model calibration and uncertainty analysis. Then Harry O'Neill, uh, which will talk about contamination and passive soil gas sampling. Helen Gibson will talk about uh, 3D geological modeling. Stuart Smith will talk about his experience in groundwater development in Tanzania. And Dragan, that's me. I will talk about about uh, one environmental uh, about remediation. Here is agenda for June. Just to see, yeah, for June and uh, June twelfth and uh, fourteen will be the same. So you can take a look at it. What we what we, what will be tomorrow? and for North America and two days after that for Europe and Africa. Just to let you know, there will be recordings. So if you are uh, not available the whole day, you can take a look at part of it. The good thing is that authors, most of the authors, I think only Harry will not be able, he's in South America. Most of the authors will answer directly your questions. So that's the advantage to be on on conference. But anyway, uh, I will put this uh, recording of this uh, conference on website, and uh, everybody who register can be uh, can uh, join it and uh, review the recordings. So it's uh, just to let you know, first annual online, hundred percent online. Okay. Sorry if I'm scrolling this too quickly. Let's talk first, uh, just uh, this, the idea of this uh, webinar, just to give you an overview uh, of what is going to be on the conference. So the first uh, presentation or lecture, whatever you like more, will be from Chris Leach and application of geophysics in groundwater investigation. So I will just quickly pass over his presentation he will uh, he will present it uh, during the conference with voice of course so let's i will just uh, move you through in interesting parts okay okay this is very interesting what a uh, geophysics analogy so we have a uh, uh, for example uh, we have a uh, uh, we have some picture of, uh, for example, these are buildings, but let's say that those buildings are underground. With geophysics, we could see only this. So it's some kind of blurred view. And even this, where we can distinguish only between air and ground. So that must be careful in geophysics analogy. So let's see which methods will be covered just bear with me okay chris will talk about primary surveys rapid reconnaissance surveys generally up to 50 meters of course uh, electromagnetic conductivity and here are devices for measuring 
electromagnetic. I like those. I like those pictures where young students are on the field and doing me uh, measurements. Okay. I will I will pause so I will show you only interesting parts. So magnetics after electromagnetic here is the magnetics. Chris will talk uh, again about it. So you will hear real nice things. And then after primary surveys we have secondary surveys. Okay. Of course, most of you are familiar with, with earth resistivity. Okay, this sound that they, I have a birds near my office, so <laughs> sorry on this. Okay, this is interesting, trends in electromagnetic. With that, you can measure depth to water table, identify fracture zones, and detection of cup rocks. Okay. This is also interesting, very deep uh, investigation, geophysical, CSMT. And as you see, let's turn on my annotation. As you see, the depth is from 100 meters to one kilometer. So let's erase this. Okay, this is interesting, something new. Ah, not new, sorry. This is a nuclear magnetic resonance. Resonance, very good for aquifers. So yeah, I think you are getting the point. Okay, gravimetry, we did a lot of investigation with bedrock uh, elevation with microgravimetry. So you will be, hear about that also and of course seismic refraction masw surface wave techniques very very useful seismic reflection okay sorry seismic reflection and we will, Chris will talk also about borehole logging. So the whole presentation, Chris' presentation will last about 45 minutes. Okay, this is very interesting. Televiewer log. So I think you are now getting the, getting the idea what will be the first, what will be the first presentation. So let's go directly to next presentation. Next presentation is John Doherty, author of PEST. If you heard about, if you're groundwater and model, doing groundwater and modeling, you know that PEST is industry standard for groundwater model cal calibration and uncertainty analysis. And his lecture will be models and decisions, productive but uneasy relationship. Okay, sorry. So let's go to John. Okay, I don't have at this moment. Hello. I don't I have. I don't have a power presentation, but uh, it's good for you to hear what's what's go going to be and how it's going to be. Reduce it as much as possible, but there will always be a lower limit on uncertainty, and that is the information content of the data we have at hand. Uncertainty can never be less than that. Now, unfortunately, all I'm doing here is presenting just a chain of logic, the scientific method, the use of models. I see so many guidelines and best practice documents which don't talk the same way as this. Okay. Okay. Uh, since I don't have a, at this moment, I should uh, uh, ask it from John. Uh, this will be really, uh, really interesting lecture 
from past author of past what is the role between models and decisions so i'm just switching over his uh, recording recorded presentation okay you see it will be pretty interesting okay ah sorry i need to okay now you see a little bit of math but not too much okay so again john dorothy will talk whoops sorry about models and decisions and his uh, presentation will be from 10 a.m this is uh, eastern uh, north american it will be on both days at the same time by different time zone uh, the next one is harry o'neill just bear with me yeah harry also did not send me pdf or presentation but it's okay it's the use of advanced passive sorbent samplers to track groundwater uh, VOC plumes and evaluate vapor intrusion risk in overlaying buildings. So let's, okay, sorry, now you can see it. Okay, I have his presentation also. Just bear with me, yes. Okay, this is Harry. Now you can hear a little bit of Harry. My talk today, which will be on the use of advanced passive sorbent samplers to track contaminant plumes in groundwater, primarily oh, sorry. chlorinated solvents and petroleum hydrocarbons, and then to evaluate the risk that is presented by these contaminants in groundwater as they diffuse through the soil pore spaces up into these the soil is immediately beneath buildings and then potentially intrude into the buildings known as vapor intrusion. So let's go ahead and get started with this talk. A high resolution data set. So this slide here and the next one will kind of give an example of that. What I'm showing here is some results from a project where the beacon passive samplers were used. And this grid shows samples collected on a 90 foot space. As you can see, there are high concentrations in this area, as well as on the east side here along the edge of the grid. Otherwise, there's non-detects, very low measurements in between those areas. However, the actual grid was collected on 30-foot spacing. So as you can see, this area here in the center was completely missed with a 90. Okay, it was, it was just a part of uh, Harry's uh, lecture. As you see, it will last for 45 minutes. Okay. So uh, then we have a lunch. Uh, we are going to have a lunch break, one hour. And after that, Helen Gibson will talk about creating 3D geological models, plus some, uh, some let's say, tricks. And I will shortly show you her presentation. Okay. So this is going to be also for 40 minutes after the lunch break. This is very interesting case study, which Helen will show you. It was published in Journal of Hydrogeology two years ago. And very interesting 3D geology model, which is translated to hydrogeological model. And there will be demonstration of the software, of course. So, okay, that is the fourth lecture. And the fifth lecture, just bear with me to, okay. The fifth lecture will be from Stuart Smith and his 
experience, the lecture, the presentation will be Tanzania, the challenge of developing groundwater, oops, sorry, Tanzania, the challenge of developing groundwater source supplies. And this is really something with just a moment. I, wish, I, I mean, I, I don't want to say nice things, just Just judge it yourself. What is interesting, you see how, how big Tanzania is. So it's really big country. Stuart did a lot of groundwater investigation. You see the part of Europe, how huge Tanzania is. Let's switch a little bit to hydrogeology. No, not yet. You cannot go to Tanzania and miss these beautiful things. Okay, a little bit of water. And let's switch to water wells. Okay, this is what is currently done in Tanzania. So they need to develop a water they need to develop a water uh, or water they need to do developing a water well this is interesting how they are getting the water so water is relatively shallow at least in this area i don't know too much of it of this Stuart will give you much more details here are some uh, problems with uh, getting water okay and as you see now uh, a present population is 34.7 millions and 80 percent is in rural rural areas annual population growth is 2.9 percent and at 2025 almost 15 million people so it's very it's big challenge to develop water resources here there actually okay let's see just a little bit just i want to show you one very nice okay this is uh, visiting Dodoma uh, uh, Makutapur, sorry on this, well field. I think they have about, just a moment, I think they have about 22 wells two, uh, serving 2,500, uh, not 2,000, 200, 1,050 people, 30 uh, million cubic per day and spend expanding to twice as that and it's uh, rock fractures uh, Stuart bring there uh, one nice camera with uh, for uh, for borehole and fractures we are looking for you see fracture zone enhanced by erosion create a small canyon okay so and on the end i will give presentation and just bear with me okay uh, my presentation will be about monitored monitoring natural attenuation of xylem i did the phd about 10 years ago and the idea is to present you uh, what could be done better in now today okay just to switch you to some interesting history of mna protocols these protocols are really good and i think i read them 10 years ago all of them and they, are, they were written really good and you get a really good knowledge but the knowledge was developing from 1994 to today and i will talk about case study 
Uh, it was 40, uh, 45 tons spill of xylem here. And okay, let's annotate a little bit. From here to here, this is a river Sava. And from here to here, there are three kilometers. And rainy wells are here. So the question was will this spill here come to these wells here? So, okay, just to erase this. So I will talk a little bit about this. Sorry on this quick switching. So we were si I was simulating different options, and then I will switch to possibilities to inhale, enhance this. Just bear with me. So this is a summary. What can be done better now in 2018? Of course, better calibration with highly parameters inversion with regularization, uncertainty analysis with PEST. Instead of R33D, which is very old program, there is a new program called MT3D USG, which was released, I think, two years ago. Yes. And it's much better than, than the RT3D. Uh, RT3 then multi level sampling and use of EMT, environmental molecular diagnostic techniques. So I will talk a little bit about that just to show you something else, and that will be 30 minutes. Okay, this is uh, about uh, calibration. So this is a method I did for another, okay, just a model moment. This is no space car uncertainty analysis. Okay, and uncertainty analysis. Okay, so uh, that will be it. As I promise every lecture, uh, just again to show you that every lecture, there are six lectures, three lectures, then lunch break, then three lectures. We will finish until 4 p.m. And yeah, that's it. Let me know if you have question. I will be open for next few minutes. We have question and answer. I think it is at the bottom of your screen. And of course, if you want to see this, you need to register. It's here or here. And it's on the bottom here. So let me know if you have any questions. I will try to answer it now and hopefully see you tomorrow. If you are in North America or South America or 14 June, if you are in Europe or Africa. Okay, it seems to me that I did not, I paused the share so you can register on this groundwater SP science and practice. So thank you for your attention. I will keep open this link for a few minutes. And yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know. Okay, I will wait a few minutes more. Just again to tell you, there will be recordings, recording of this uh, conference. And so you can take a look at different presentations later. It will, it will recording will be available for one year. Okay, I see that some of you I know. I don't want to mention that, just 
say hello to my colleagues from South Africa and Macedonia and Germany. Okay, just a quick overview. So we will have a geophysics, we will have modeling, we will have a contamination, geology models, application of groundwater developing in the, uh, the groundwater developing in Tanzania, and remediation with monitoring natural alternation. Okay, it's now 30 minutes. Thank you very much and hopefully see you tomorrow or 14 for Europe and South Africa. Thank you.